burning up, going crazy like a wildfire. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another epic video and today I'm going to be talking about three worst things that beginners do when grading and these mistakes are straight from my own personal experience. I've made them when I was starting my career as a colorist and I see so many new colorists doing the same. Ever wonder how to turn your SDR grade to HDR? In addition to that, this free webinar includes proper workflow to using Hollywood's most used film print emulation, custom techniques to stress testing your LUTs, future proof LUTs for HDR and ASUS workflow, learn to balance your footage in seconds with printer lights, secrets to building an HDR ready note tree, prepping Dolby Vision trim for Netflix, pro tip when saving a power grade. I will end the session with an extended Q&A. These questions came from you guys. Click the link in the description to sign up for this free training. And guys, one of the new things I want to have fun with is uh, what I'm calling quiz time. And basically, I'm going to ask you three questions throughout the entire video, and then you can answer them by just saying A1, A2, A3. So the first question is, who graded Black Klansman? Jill Bogdanovich, Ty Roth, Brian Smaller, or Tom Poole? And guys, if you're enjoying the content, you know exactly what to do. Smash that like button, subscribe to my channel for more awesomeness. Make sure you're following me on Instagram, and let's roll that intro. Let's get this party started. So first thing that I want to talk about, uh, biggest mistake beginners make is not knowing their camera information. And that is detrimental for many reasons. But let's just address the one that I haven't in other videos, which is your cinematographer wants to see what they saw on set. And most of the time, it's just a Rec. 709 LUT applied to the image. So it's properly converted from log to Rec. 709. That way they will know that, okay, this is what it looked like on set. Now let's make it better. So in this case, what I would do is I'll just keep my note tree pretty simple for this particular video. I'm going to open up my open effects and just drop on color space transform or CST. And now I know that this is shot on Alexa mini. So all I have to do is set this to Ari Alexa, my input color space, and then input gamma to um, Ari log C. And as soon as I apply that, this is where we're sitting, right? So we can obviously see that the image is really, really pushed and just look at what's happening, um, how dark and moody this is. And that's pretty cool if you're going for that look. But at least now we know that, okay, this is where we are. We need some work to do. We need to bring up some information in her clothes, in the motorbike, and then in the background too, just to create a bit more drama. But at least with this, your director can see it and be like, okay, this is what it looked like. And you can do the same. You can just grab these middle click and now the Rec. 709 LUT is applied. And basically that's what they saw when they were filming it. Everything is properly exposed. Nothing is blown out. We still have information in the shadows as we can see right here. So this is what it looked like when your DP was filming it. Okay. So this is the first step that you should follow as a beginner colorist and avoid making that mistake. Let's move on to our second step, which is spending way too much time on one particular shot. Question number two, who shot Interstellar? Hoyt, Roger Deakins, Wally Pfister, Lawrence Schur. So that is the ultimate mistake. I've made it many times when I was uh, starting my career as a colorist. You get, a, you know, 60, 70 shots, right, in an ad, and you end up spending three and a half, four hours on one shot, perfecting it, creating all those windows. Well, that is not a good use of your time because when you're going to move on to the next shot, what's going to happen? So let's try it here, right? So let's just create that scenario. I'm going to uh, add a new version. So then this one, we can just like really go ham. So let's say I start with a little bit of my primary. So I bring up some information in my shadows, something like that. And I'm just like, okay, this is not looking bad. Now let's start working individually on certain areas that I want to grab and then focus on. So I can come in here right? I can bring this window down around here. And now I'm saying, okay, I want to, I want to bring this down. I want to bring the highlights down a little bit, right? So like I can just go in here, grab my highlight slider and start bringing that down. And now I'm going, okay, this is looking good. All right, that's good. And now I go in this note and I say, you know what? I want to create some color separation. So I'm going to throw another window. Let's just say this window right here. I'm going to move it around. And I'm going to put it right here. Let's feather it out a bit more. 
And now I want to start giving it a different color or maybe I want to lift it a little bit. And then I just want to add, I want to cool it off a little bit, something like that, right? And I want to add a bit more green in there, just like, you know, a little Hollywood touch. So now we're sitting right here and we're saying, okay, this is really cool. Now we're adding a lot of information. So this is just a quick example, right? So we did a couple of these things on our first shot, but what I'm talking about is like where you would go in and just, you will not stop. You'll keep creating windows and secondaries and just, you know, bring up certain information in certain areas, right? So like I can even go right here and I can pull this out a little bit and then I'll go, okay, this is really cool. Let's just imagine that we have all these going on and now we track them as well. So what happens when I go to this shot and I just like middle click and bring all that information over? Like what is happening now? Like I don't need this, right? Like particularly, I don't really need to bring the information down here. Now I have to be responsible for these nodes every shot. And if I have 70 shots in a commercial, you do the math. And that's why this is not the right way to go about it. You wanna make these changes at the end. After you're done with your base pass, after the look is approved, then at the end, if you have an hour or two hours left, whatever, you go back in and you make these adjustments. So this is a very, very crucial step uh, when it comes to color grading, okay? Many people make that mistake. They start off with this and then they just, you know, pigeonhole themselves and then you just don't know what to do. So do the base first, work with your primaries, get the basic look in, Make sure you get your director, your producer's blessings, DP is happy, and then at the end, go back in and make these adjustments, okay? Let's move on to our third step, which is, so let's just create another version off of this one. And now what I wanna show you, uh, a mistake that people make is they don't really exercise their primaries, they just jump right in with their secondaries. So what they will do here in this case is, this like I, and I'm not making this up. OK, this is this is just what I see a lot of beginners do. So they will go under their qualifiers and let's just say they'll do something like that. So I'm going to take my highlights. And I just want to select only the shadow areas. So I grab my shadows. Maybe I'll make this pretty strong. So something like this and I only grab all my shadows. So they'll do something like that and then they'll like lift up their shadows. Okay. So they're like, no joke. They'll do something like that and then they'll go in here and they'll say, all right, let's select our reds like this. And, uh, you know, let's, let's make it a little bit better. Right. So what can we do? We can open it up a little bit, you know, add a little bit of denoise, something like that. And then they'll go, all right, I want to bring the saturation down on that, right? Like something like this. And then they'll go into another window and then they'll go, all right, let's grab this area right here. Let's see what we're grabbing. Let's add a little bit of denoise. And then once again, let's bring the saturation down or something like that. And you're doing all this, right? First of all, if you really punch in and see your key is cracking all over the place, right? It doesn't matter how clean uh, your key is, it's gonna be impossible to keep it consistent. Once again, if you have 70 shots right here, okay? And you have to go through those. So that's the mistake that a lot of the beginners will make. They'll just jump right into their secondaries before they even tried their primaries. Question number three, when is House of the Dragon coming out? Mid 2021, late 2021? 2022 or TBD. So the approach that I would recommend instead would be, let's create another version here. Um, it would be to like, okay, what do we need to do when we look at this image, first of all, right? So one of the things that we can do is just bring up the overall exposure of our image. There's many ways to do it. Um, one of my new favorite ways is going under your HDR palette, clicking right here and selecting the right color space so I'm going to go ahead and select the right color space for my camera, which is RE log C. And now I can go under my global adjustment here. And this basically works just like your camera. So when we go to one, we basically just brought up a stop. Okay. And everything is behaving how it's supposed to, if you just had shot it with one stop um, over or not over, but like where we are right now. Okay. 
So, I mean, this is obviously too much, so I'll bring it down, meet somewhere in the middle, something like that. So now we're sitting right here, okay? Another thing that we can do, we can go in here and maybe, you know what, there's a bit too much red. So let's just go under our temp and tint. And I want to, I want to just take my tint and add a bit more green because it just looks cinematic too, you know, and it just creates a really nice color separation, something like that. And then I can take my temp and I can either warm it up or I can cool it off. You know, in this case, I like it cooled off a little bit. I will go back in my tint again and just add a little bit more green. And once again, it's like really stylized look, but it just looks a lot better than this. So like I am able to do all of that without really getting into my secondaries, which means if I were to copy paste that grade to other shots, I don't have to worry about retracking each window, stuff like that. So there you have it. Just wanted to share quick and easy ways to avoid these mistakes. And I promise you, if you're a beginner colorist and you haven't tried these methods that I shared in this video, apply it to your next video and the result will speak for itself. Let's check out the final look in full screen. Burn it up, going crazy like a wildfire. So there you go. Learn from my mistakes. If you're enjoying the content, you know what to do. Smash that like button. Subscribe to my channel for more awesomeness. Do not forget to check out the free training. Link is down below. It will blow your mind, get you to the next, next level. And that said, I will see you guys in the next video.